In this chapter, in order for us to do questions, which we're going to be trying to later, we need to make use of a lot of those geometrical properties for triangles, for circles, for quadrilateral that you guys have already learned. But before that, let's take a look at two new ones. First will be this midpoint theorem. Midpoint theorem states that if M is the midpoint of AB, and if N is the midpoint of AC, then we have two properties. Number one is MN is going to be parallel to BC. The second one is MN is going to be half the distance of BC. Let me just very quickly prove to you why this is so. And I'm going to make use of the fact that M is half, M is the midpoint of AB, which means that AM over AB, this must be equal to half. And since N is the midpoint of AC, that means AN over AC, this must also be half. And the reason why I'm looking at these two sides is because I'm actually looking at, the, uh, looking at this as uh, two triangles. The smaller triangle which is here and the bigger triangle that is here. I want to try to prove to you that these two triangles, they are similar. So I've already found out that the two corresponding sides of the triangles, they share the same ratio. I mean, this is not enough for us to prove that it, it, they are going to be um, similar. But they also share a common angle here, which means that if I were to look at this angle for the small triangle, it is this angle MAN. And for the big triangle, we are talking about the triangle BAC. And they are the same because they are, they are common angles, which means that triangle AMN, the smaller triangle, is similar to the bigger triangle triangle A, B, C. Why? Because of S, A, S, the side angle side similarity. And because they are similar, that is why if I were to look at the angles, they are also going to be the same, right? If I were to look at this angle, this angle will be the same as this angle. Let me quote it down. So angle A, M, N, this is equal to the angle A, B, C, because they are corresponding angles in a similar triangle. But at the same time, if these two angles are the same, that means these two lines, they must be parallel to each other. Why? Because of corresponding angle. That is how we get our first property, which is MN must be parallel to BC because of, once again, corresponding angles. And if I were to quote the corresponding sides of the similar triangle that we have just dis discovered, that means AM over AB should be equal to a n over a c which should also be equal to m n over b c since they are corresponding sides of the similar triangles which means that this will be equal to half and based on this this helps me to show the second property m n is going to be half of b c and let's take a look at the second one which is this alternate segment theorem So for this alternate segment theorem, it is given to us that if PQ is tangent to the circle at point A, then this angle here, CAQ, is going to be the same as this angle here, ABC, according to what I've typed here. Let me prove to you why this is so. In fact, I sort of like, like this proof because we have to do an improvisation, which is quite slick, okay? This improvisation will require us to draw a diameter of this circle that starts from A. So it's going to pass through the, the center of the circle. Let's say the center of the circle is here. So if I were to draw starting from A, the diameter of the circle is going to be a line that is going to be something that is like this. And because it is the diameter of the circle, which means that this line must be perpendicular to the tangent. And if I were to connect this to this point here, which is where this sort of like triangle touched the, the edge of the circle, then this angle here, this angle here has to be 90 degrees. Why? Because this is the angle in a semicircle. It is a property that we have learned before. So now we have this as 90 degrees and this as 90 degrees and another thing that is in common will be this angle here is actually the same as this angle here right because they are sharing the same segment and if this is 90 degrees and this belong i mean these two angles belong to the triangle that means this plus this angle this angle here it must also be 90 degrees and this plus this must also be 90 degrees because the, the, the diameter is perpendicular to the tangent. So this plus this is 90 degrees, this plus this is 90 degrees. This tells me that this angle here has to be the same as this angle here. And this angle here 
is the same as this angle, which means if I were to just ignore this, okay, which means that this angle here is the same as this angle, which is like what we are we were trying to prove. Angle C A Q is the same as angle A B C, the alternate segment theorem. We're going to be making use of midpoint theorem, we are going to make use of alternate segment theorem, we are going to be making use of so many other properties about angles, properties about triangles, properties about uh, similar triangles, properties about quadrilaterals, qu properties about circles, all these that you have learned before together with these two new ones to try questions that is related to this plain, uh, plain geometry chapter. I don't think they are very easy questions, so you require us to be a bit patient. Let's take a look at the first one. So it is this question over here. Let's try to prove this. So in question number one, we are given a diagram. And in this diagram, XTF is tangent to the circle. It is also given to us that angle CAT is two times of angle BAT. Let me just indicate it here, okay? So this angle here is going to be two times of this angle here. And we are supposed to prove that Tx is equal to Tc. And the first thing that I'm going to try to do is to code this. Angle CTF is equal to angle CAT. Angle CTF is equal to angle CAT. And for me to code this, it is because of what we have just discussed. It is because of the alternate segment theorem. And it is necessary for us to give a reason to whatever that we have quoted here based on the geometrical properties that we have learned. So I'm going to do that. This is based on the alternate segment theorem. Okay, it is based on the alternate segment theorem. Okay, let me spell this properly. So I have this. And... Um, what is this angle CAT? According to what that is given to us by the question, this angle CAT is two times of angle BAT. So I'm going to just code this also. So angle CTF, this is equal to two times of angle BAT. And for this angle BAT, it is actually exactly the same as the angle XCT. This here, where these two angles, they are the same. Why? Because they share the same segment. So I'm going to say this as 2 times of angle x, c, t. And again, let's give the geometrical reason why we can code this. is because we are working on the angles in the same segment. Angles in the same segment. Okay. And if I were to come back to this angle c, t, f, there's another way for me to express this angle c, t, f. This angle CTF is this angle plus this angle, right? Because this is the exterior angle of a triangle. So let me quote that. So this is equal to angle XCT, XCT plus this angle um, CXT, okay? This angle plus this angle. So plus angle CXT. And again, I'm going to quote the reason because this is exterior angle of a triangle. And what is angle CTF? It is this. So let me replace this and rewrite it as two times of angle XCT. So this is equal to what we have here, which is angle XCT plus angle CXT. This and this are the same. I'm going to bring this over to left-hand side. So two times of angle XCT minus one time of angle XCT leaves me with an angle XCT. And this is equal to angle CXT. So now we have proven that these two angles, they are the same. And what do we have here? We have an isosceles triangle. And if it is an isosceles triangle with the two bases here, that are the same angles. That means this length here is going to be the same as this length here, which is what the question wants me to prove. Therefore, I can now say that TX is equal to TC. Let's give a reason also because triangle TCX is an isosceles triangle. Okay, this is question number one. Let's take a look at question number two. So in question number two, we are given this diagram. And in this diagram, it is given to us that CA is the same distance as CB. And the line CZ is tangent to the circle and this line AX when it is being produced it is going to touch this tangent at the point Y. So in part one we are supposed to prove that AB this line is parallel to CY. 
So in part one, the first thing that I'm going to try code is this angle B, C, Y is equal to the angle C, A, B. Angle B, C, Y, this angle here, is the same as the angle C, A, B. C, A, B is the same as this angle here. So this angle is the same as this angle because of the alternate segment theorem that we have discussed. So I'm going to write down the reason here, alternate segment theorem. And we also know that since uh, this length here and this length here, they are the same. So this triangle here is going to be an isosceles triangle. And if this is an isosceles triangle, then this angle and this angle, which is the base of the isosceles triangle, they must be the same. So I'm going to code that. So this angle here, angle C, A, B, is equal to this angle here, and this angle here is the angle C, B, A. And they are the base angles of the, of the isosceles triangle. Let's make sure that we code the reason. So base angles of the isosceles triangle. So angle C, A, B, angle C, A, B, which means that this must be the same as this angle, right? So now I can code. Therefore, angle B, C, Y is equal to angle C, B, A. Let's take a look at our diagram again. Where is this angle B, C, Y? So B, C, Y, now this angle is the same as angle C, B, A is the same as this angle here. So this angle is the same as this angle. You know what this tells us? This tells us that A, B and C, Y, they must be parallel because of alternate angles. So now I can say that therefore A, B is going to be parallel to CY and the reason is because of alternate angles. This is part one and let's take a look at part two. So in part two, we are supposed to be showing that two of the triangles that we can see here, they are similar. They are triangles ACY, this huge triangle over here and triangle B, X, C. Okay, we are trying to prove that these two triangles, they are similar. And the first thing that I'm going to try quote is that the angle C, A, Y, angle C, A, Y, this angle, is the same as angle X, B, C. Angle X, B, C. So this angle is the same as this angle. Why? Because they are sharing the same segment. So I'm going to write down the reasons. Angles in the same segment. Okay, we know these two angles, they are the same. And if you were to look at this angle, BAC, this angle here, and this angle, okay, angle ACY, when I add them together, they are going to be 180 degrees because they are interior angles. We have already proven that these two lines, they are parallel, right? So this angle plus this angle, they must be 180 degrees. Let me write it down. Angle BAC plus angle a, C, Y. This is 180 degrees because of interior angles. And this is when we make use of what we have proven in part one, which is A, B is parallel to C, Y. And we also know that this angle here plus this angle here, they are going to be 180 degrees also. This is angles in the opposite segment. So I'm going to write that down also. So this angle B, A, C plus this angle here, which is BXC, plus angle BXC, this is also going to be 180 degrees. Let me write down the reason. It is angles in the opposite segment. So this plus this is 180 degrees. This plus this is 180 degrees, which makes this angle, these two angles, exactly the same. So I can write that down now. Therefore, angle ACY, uh, is going to be the same as angle BXC. So let's have a look at what we have so far for these two triangles that we were trying to prove that they are similar to each other. We have managed to prove that this angle and this angle, they are the same. So two of the angles in the, in the two triangles, they are the same already. And we have also proven that this angle, which belongs to the big triangle, is the same as this angle, which belongs to the smaller triangle. So we have two angles in the triangles that are the same as each other. So we can really now say that the two triangles are similar based on AA similarity. So let me write it down here. Therefore, triangle ACY is similar to triangle BXC. And the reason is because of 
AA similarity. Let's move on to part three. So in part three, we are supposed to be now proving that this BC square thing, okay, it is equal to AY times BX. I don't think it is immediately obvious, but uh, let me just give you a hint. We are going to be making use of part two, which is the fact that triangle ACY is going to be similar to triangle BXC. Personally, I will like to try to redraw the two triangles side by side so that it is easier for me to see the similarity between them because in this view, I don't think it is that easy. So I'm going to keep this triangle ACY, but I'm going to redraw the triangle BXC. So for this triangle BXC, okay, I know it is going to be similar shape as this. So let me just draw something that is as similar as possible. It is definitely a smaller triangle. So we are expecting a triangle that looks a bit like this. Okay, and we have proven that this angle and this angle, they are the same. So this angle here, this X here, this angle here is going to be matched to this angle. And um, this angle is the same as this angle. So this A is going to be matched to B, which means that this C here is going to be here. Okay, so now we are looking at this triangle, which is similar to this triangle A, C, Y. So based on these two similar triangles, we can then code that B, C over A, Y. B, C over A, Y. This is going to be the same as B, X over A, C. B, X, B, X over A, C. I'm using the corresponding sides of the similar triangles. So let me code that. So corresponding sides of similar triangles and let me quote the similar triangles triangle ACY and triangle BXC these were the two triangles that we were looking at previously and I am now also going to quote the fact that uh, AC this AC here AC here AC here is the same as BC this was given to us by the question right AC is the same as BC so this AC I'm going to replace BX divided by AC, which I'm going to replace it by BC. And the reason why I'm doing so is because there's also a BC here. So if I were to just re replicate this also, okay? So BC over AY is also going to be BX over BC. Now I can cross multiply. So from here, if I were to cross multiply this times this gives me BC squared. And this times this gives me what I'm supposed to be proving, AY times BX. So we have proven part three. I don't think such questions in plain geometry chapter is going to be very easy. Personally, I find it sort of like difficult and we probably need some time to uh, process and work through a strategy before we can get the full solution out. So I want to remind you guys to continue to practice, to persevere and press on.